Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at something a bit different than what I've been doing before. The reason being, and this is the reason why I'm actually late uploading this video, is that I had a tweet during Friday night from a view of the channel to say that their eight year old daughter is following this series, which I'd like to thank that viewer. And also you've inspired me, it's quite endearing to hear that because we have to attract the younger generation into using FreeCAD because they're going to be the next generation of young engineers, which actually inspired me to actually create something that we could sit down with our family and create a physical output, such as this elephant pen holder that we can actually place pens in, but we don't need a 3D printer for that. We're just printing this to card. If you've got a printer, you can print it out on paper and then transfer it to card. Or if you've got some thin card, you can place it through the printer itself. A lot of people think that going to CAD will mean you have to have something like a CNC machine or a 3D printer or a laser cutter. That's not always true. We can actually create physical 2D output from a 3D model. So this inspired me from the tweet to actually create something that was a bit family friendly. Obviously the language is going to be technical in there. You can't get away from technical CAD language, but it's aimed towards a beginner's perspective and have something fun to output. We can't all afford a 3D printer. Being able to print to card, being able to create 2D forms from 3D objects adds more fun to our CAD design. As well as FreeCAD, we're going to be using something called Inkscape. Now this is a free program that can be downloaded. It's open source and we're just going to use that to print the 2D design as we export it out of FreeCAD. So I hope you're enjoying the journey from the videos that I'm placing up on my channel. And let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So we've opened up FreeCAD. I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to jump over on the start page at the moment. I'm going to jump over to the Sketcher workbench. And we're going to create from top down each of the individual parts. First part I'm going to create is the front and back parts of this object. So we click on the create a new sketch button and go down. We're looking down on the XY plane. What you'll see is when we hit OK, the navigation cube has changed to top. Just going to create the shape that we need in here. We're going to use the polyline tool here. We could use the rectangle and start trimming objects out of there or trimming geometry out of there. But there's no point. We're going to be using the polyline. This is a lot quicker. So we can do this all in one go. We're just going to rough out the shape that we need. So we're going to be needing a line. And then coming down, I'm going to try to keep it over this center point here. Coming down like so. You can see I've got the auto constraints on. So I've got a horizontal constraint kicking in there and a vertical constraint kicking in here. And we're going to make a tab so you can see the horizontal constraint has kicked in by the side of the mouse pointer. And then down you can see the vertical constraint and across horizontal and down like this. We don't worry about dimensions just yet. We can place that in the mode. Horizontal, vertical, and if we accidentally go down here, it doesn't matter because we can fix these. So if I did those on purpose like that, we can hit escape, hit escape again to get the mouse pointer back, and then click on this line and add our vertical. Click on these two so you can select both of them at the same time and had a horizontal constraint so now we have this tabbed object and we need a horizontal constraint on this one as well, like so. So that keeps them all in a horizontal alignment and vertical alignment there. We're going to start creating the symmetry across here. So with a symmetry constraint, we need a line or a point that we're going to constrain over or be symmetry over and we're going to use this horizontal line. That's why I place this tab over here. 
so for the symmetry constraint click one point and then click the other then the last selection which i'm going to select this line is the one we're going to create symmetry over and use symmetry constraint we see we've gone into an orange sketch which means it's over constrained the solving message on the left hand side shows sketches got redundant constraints on there so we can hit click to select and what you'll see is that this vertical constraint is selected and that's because there's no point in having a symmetry constraint with a vertical constraint because it will keep vertical anyway so when we click to select it highlights it and we just hit the delete key and that gets rid of that constraint and you'll see the same will happen on this one so the last one is this line symmetry and just come over to the left click to select and then hit the delete key and we can do these two points as well but because we've got a point here and a point here that's opposite each other we can use this point and this point so from the corners and this point and do a symmetry across there so you can see if I pull in these two points they will be symmetrical across there obviously we need to add in some more constraints in here and we need to keep these two lengths here this one this one and also this one and this one they must be equal to each other so we've got a quality across these that means if I pull these in and out you'll see the ones on the right move in and out but when we move up and down these need to be equal as well so we can take this line in here and this line or this edge and make those equal as well so then when we move this up and down you can see how those move now we've got the basic shape we can actually start thinking about other constraints like length constraints one other thing is is that we must check to make sure that we've got equality across here because less data and constraints or when I say data and constraints when we create an actual fixed length of say 10 millimeters 5 millimeters etc less we have the more easy it is to follow this sketch because it won't be cluttered up with loads of constraints across here so let's put a length constraint in here I'm going to use this point and this point and make this 70 millimeters so we've bypassed doing a constraint across this line this line and this line we can actually do it across points like so let's put 70 millimeters across there and we want the same across here as well so this line at the top here let's put a length in there and that's 70 millimeters as well you can see two lines this top and the bottom they've gone green that means they're fully constrained so now when we try to move this you can see we can't actually move that point but we can move this point because these ones are fully constrained down and they won't move and that's what we're aiming to do get a fully constrained sketch so now we need to add some length in here I'm going to create this length this one here or we could do it on this side because we've already got this length here so we can do it on this side that means we keep this left hand side uncluttered because this is symmetrical so if we place all our constraints on this side then we can see this one without any of the datum constraints across here it just makes it a little bit easier to see what we're doing so this length here I'm going to create a length against and we're going to use 15 millimeters across there this is our tab our connection tab you can see we've got some more constraints going on here because we started constraining this down so these lines are now fully constrained next thing I'm going to do is set the length of this one here and use a distance and you can see behind it's going fully green which means the minute I place this millimeter length in 
it will be fully constrained. And set that one to five millimeters. So now we have got all our constraints in place. We can move these if we so desire. So come in, see this five millimeter constraint here. We can pull this out by just by dragging it out, out of the way. So we can see what we're doing. And the same for this one, like so. So we can see those constraints there. So that's one part done. So if I hit close, we can see our sketch there. Now I've just done this in the sketcher. Now I've got a number of options sort of pad in this or extrude in this. So from here, we could go over to the part workbench or part design. But I'm just going to create another sketch, but I'm going to keep it neat and tidy and just rename this sketch. And we're going to call this front back sketch because they're going to be used for the front and back of the object. And I'm going to click on that one and press the space bar. And we're going to start a new sketch. So now I've just clicked on the empty space and created a new sketch. And again, on the XY plane. So we're going to create our second object. The first object we created, this one here, and just press the space bar on there, is an object that has tabs on the side. So these will slot into the side pieces. We're going to be needing a bottom piece now. So if we look in this, say this was our side, then we're going to need a bottom piece that comes out of here. Very similar size, but we're going to just change the tab arrangement on there and make it look like basically like the letter I. So let's go back into our sketch. Well, we're already in the sketch. So let's just click on this front back sketch, press the space bar and we've got sketch here and we're going to again use the polyline and we're going to sketch out just basically a letter i here and you can see i'm not too worried about the constraints that are coming out the auto constraints i'm actually doing this on purpose so i can show you how we can constrain this easily so we've only constraint we've got there is the auto constraint back to the same point there to close the sketch. Hit escape or the right mouse button just to get the mouse pointer back. Now I'm looking for the vertical lines, this one and this one, all the ones that are out that haven't got this little line by the side of them. Select those, so let's select those. So I click on those, don't have to hold down the control, just select those there and add the vertical constraint. And we need the same with the horizontal constraint. So click in all of these and click the little horizontal constraint there. So we've got all those constrained down. Now we can start adding some length. This time I'm going to use this length here and create a horizontal distance between those and make that 80 millimeters. And we want this one and this one must be equal. So those are equal lengths. While we're at it, we may as well make these lengths equal as well. So these side lengths here need to be equal. And also, well, this length and this length and this length and this length are equal to. We're over constrained. If we look on the task tab, you can see we've got some redundant constraints there. Click to select. They will be highlighted. So we've got the equality there. Just hit delete and get rid of that. So now we've got the equality constraints in and you can see when we move up and down, everything moves together. So we're all good. You need to be symmetrical over this center point. Now look at your shape. There's two ways I can see to do this. We could use, if you draw, draw a square in here, you can actually create a symmetrical constraint across here. So this square here, we could use this point and this point with this center point and make it symmetrical. Or we could go to the square outside, look around here, draw a square around here, use this point this point and this point and use the symmetry constraint. So with symmetry over the center there, like so. 
Now it's time to get some more lengths in. So we've got the 80 millimeters going across here. Obviously this one's going to be the same. These are going to be our tabs. So these here. So we need to add some length in here. And this is going to be five millimeters again, five millimeter tab. So this will be five as well. Let's just pull this down and away. And you can see this isn't fully constrained here. So we need some height. So this point and this point, and they're going to be 70 millimeters, like so. So let's pull this out and we'll bring this one inside and just zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing. So we've got the height in there and we can see we've still got some constraining to do because we're moving that up and down quite easily. Um, we So we need to constrain this length here, that one there, with a height see everything's going fully constrained in the background tab length is going to be 15 millimeters and hit ok so now we've got the bottom part so this is the bottom so if we close and rename this sketch bottom sketch like so so now if i bring back the other one you can see that's sitting on top of there And we can now extrude these out and use these as the building blocks for our next stage. And that's getting the side pieces on. So we'll do that in the part design. So let's jump over to the part design. We're going to have these two as separate bodies. So we've got already got the front back sketch there and the bottom sketch. Let's hide these so we don't see anything. Make sure nothing's selected. Go over to the task and create a body. It's going to ask us to create a sketch, but we've already got sketches created. So we just go over to the model and we've got the body in there. And let's bring in our front back sketch. So press the space bar on there to make it visible and just pull that into the body. So this shows that you don't have to create a body first. You can create a sketch and then pull that in. If you're not decided on the workbench you're going to use, for example, I could do this in the part workbench rather than part design, then you can do some sketching first and then decide at a later time. We're not going to pull this bottom sketch into the, this body because we can create a new body for this. So now I can extrude this by using the little icon here, pad a selected sketch. So in part design it's pad, in part it's extrude. So if you should have used the extrude terminology there. This is an additive feature, so part, create an additive feature, and pad. So we've padded this up. Pad it up five millimeters. Click off, this will change, and we've got our first piece there. We'll be using two of these pieces. Come over to the bottom sketch and we're going to do the same with that but first of all we're going to select this body right click rename and basically these are the front and back we won't use side because we're going to be creating the side of this later so front back body and in there we've got a pad with a front back sketch i'm going to click on that front back body and press the space bar that hides it and we'll click off make sure nothing's selected and create a new body again. So we've got a new body in there. You can do the same by going up to part design, create body. So new body in there, take the bottom sketch this time and drop it into body 001, new create body. You can see it's gone bold and that means it's an active body. So all the operations that we do are on active body. So this body here is bold. So we click on the bottom sketch and we're gonna use the pad. And again, pad this up by five millimeters. Click five on there, click off, and then hit okay. And we'll change this to bottom body. Now we've got the renamed parts. I'm gonna bring back the front back body. And you can see this is just sitting on top of the bottom body at the moment. So we're going to transform this into place. So I'm going to click on the front back body and click on front. 
and right click transform. So we get the axis handler here, which we can actually allow this to pull this up out the way, as you can see there. And we need to place this in the correct position. So I'm gonna come around to this side and we need to rotate this around this way. So it's straight up like so. And we can move this and then move this into position. So what we're looking for is to place this so it touches this bottom body. Now it can be a bit more accurate and use our placements if I okay that. This should be in the right position as it is now. So we come into the placement front back body. Look at the placement, look at the position. And we've got minus 35 there and the Z35. So that's actually touching that. This should be about five millimeters either side of here because this is the width that's left over because this one is 80 millimeters and this one is 70. So we should have five either side here. So we're just placing that into position. I mean, we could measure across here if we so desire. So we can click on one of the measurement tools along here. So it'll be this one, We've got a number of them along here. And we'll click this point and this point. And you can see that we've got a five millimeter there. You just about see that in green. Let's bring this around this side. So you can see that there. So we've got five millimeter this side and obviously we'll have a five millimeter the other side as well. We can clear those dimensions and close. So we're knowing that we're in the right position. Let's zoom out and bring this around. What we want to do is actually clone this across to the other side. And the way to do that is select the body that we want to clone, the front back body. We're going to be using this clone tool here, create a new clone. Now this differs from the draft workbench clone tool in that it clones a body and the contents of that body as one. Also available from part design and create clone. When we click on that, you can see we've got this body here that's cloned. If I right click and transform, and you can see the body that we clicked on is a clone that we can transform into place. So I'm just going to transform this into place. There we go. And if we have a look, body two, go into here, we can see the clone in here. And also we can be a bit more accurate with our placement in here if we so desire. Let's place that into position now. Let's rename the clone front back clone body. Now it's important to note that anything that's made with our original object will get placed on the clone as well. So for instance, if I came into the front back body, double click the front back sketch, and let's say let's create a hole in here. So let's create a circle just here, like so. That'll create a void and it will be reflected in the clone as well. So this is really handy if we've got two sides that need to be a mirror of each other. So we can just create a clone of that and any amendments we make to one will get cloned upon the other. I'm just gonna come back into that sketch and just remove that circle, remove that void in there and hit close. So now we've got this. These are our side pieces which we use to give the structure strength. So if I create anything here and on the other side, basically we've got a structure that we can actually place together and it will create our pen holder because this side is open. So for instance, if I come over to the left and I'll create just something really simple upon here, I'm gonna create a new body. So we'll collapse all of these. So new body and we'll place a sketch in there and we want it along 
the YZ plane. So looking at it from the side here, like so. So YZ plane, yeah, okay. And then we've got this here, our sketch is here, but this doesn't matter because we're just gonna create one side of the object. So for instance, if I place, say a slot in here, like so, then if I pad this slot, hit close and pad this slot and give it the same width as five millimeters and use this right click transform and bring this forwards. So the tabs just slice through there like so. And we'll move this forward a bit because we need to actually butt up against this object. There we go. And you can see those tabs are sitting there flush with that surface. Because we have this now, we can just clone this again on the other side and line it up on the other side. We need to obviously take out these sections here, which are quite easy. This opens up a lot of opportunities to create something a bit more creative in there and also to work quite organically with our object. So at the moment I've placed a slot in there and padded that slot. So the slot sketch, if going to that pad, you can see that this one here is a slot in the sketch, but it can be used for pad or create an avoid in there. But let's go a bit more creative. So that's get rid of this and hit delete. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use the endpoints and rim point, and also I'm going to use the polyline. So we're going to create, say, a pair of feet in here, something like this. And we've got the auto constraints on. You can see the auto constraints are kicking in, and we're getting the horizontal constraint there. One didn't actually get placed on here, so let's place a horizontal constraint on there and make these two equal and we want the feet equal as well the quality there and we can move these into position i'm not going to fully constrain this i'm going to make these two in line so using the horizontal constraint there so those two are nicely in line as well that means if we move these to get ourselves in position let's bring this up a bit you can see what's happening there so these are two feet i'm going to make some kind of animal in here so i'm going to use the arc now this from this drop down endpoints and rim points and we'll add basically an arc to this like so and we can add another one And what we'll do with these two arcs, we can use this arc and this arc. So I've just clicked on both of those and use a tangency constraint. We'll get this constraint subtraction come up because we've got the avoid redundant auto constraints on there. And we'll hit OK and we get a nice curve going all the way around there. And now I'm going to use a B spline. So I'll bring this across and we'll use a B spline. And once I start placing this in, you'll probably realize what it is. So we're just using B spline and just roughing out an object in here. And we'll connect to that point there and hit escape. And we've got that coming around there. It's just a rough shape. You can take more care if you so desire. But I'm looking for basically an elephant trunk shape here for our elephant. And we can pull this down. We can make some amendments in here. I'm not gonna go too far into it. We're just gonna get a shape in here and we'll give this basically an eye as well, something like that. I hit close, then you can see because I already padded that sketch, that's actually kicked in there. So we've got our shape already there. Now we've got, if you think about it, we could 
use this side as a pen holder so we can place our pens in here once we get another one of these on the other side and also we could put our mobile phone or a picture frame in here we can shape this a bit more carefully and making sure this trunk is in line with these feet so we get three points of contact on this side so anything heavy going in here it won't topple this over let's just clone this so let's take this side and clone this over to the back so body 003 let's rename that this is the side body we'll take that side body use the clone and now we've got a side body clone and we'll right click and transform that and this can transform over here and we'll place this into position like so so we've got two sides we still haven't taken out the tabs which we'll do now so we've got the side body and cloning you can see what we're going for now that's do a bit more work on here that's remove these from here there's a really quick and easy way to do this and also it's quite a flexible way because the material that i'm going to remove in here will be affected by the changes of these side bodies we're going to be using something called a sub shape binder so this green icon here create a sub object shape binder what this allows me to do is I must make sure I have an active body. So I want to create a sub shape binder in this body here, the side body, because I want to remove material from here. The reason why I'm doing this is because if this was one single object, then in our sketch, that's coming to our sketch. So in the pad in the sketch zero two, if this was one single object, then come around to this side I would just use the import create an edge link to external geometry to import that geometry and click on that geometry but you can see we've got a problem in that we've got a message down the bottom saying the object belongs to another body can't link so we can't do this cross body link or can we well that's where sub shape binder comes in handy or even a shape binder the blue icon here to use the shape binder we must have an active body so you can see our side body is active at the moment because it's bold if it's not just click on it and right click toggle active body or we can double click so if I had this one active from back clone and we had the side body you can see that one's active at the moment let's double click the side body now that one's active we are going to make a shape binder of these parts here now before we start it's worth coming into the sketch and just having a look at our sketch so we can see the sketch has flipped around this way because I've drawn it around this way it puts some angle in and you can see I'm actually editing the back sketch so we'll do a section view then you can see that's in there so these are in here so this is where we want to add the shape binder to this side here so let's hit close and we've got the faces here of the sides coming through don't need this body let's press the space on that body so i can either click the face of this one or control click say these edges those edges here or these points and everything that I've selected I've selected a line there let's get rid of that and select that point and everything I've selected so let's select this line and this line so from that selection we'll bind that subject binder to those individual elements so click on the green icon here that creates a binder you can see some orange has appeared on the sketch this is the reference material that we'll use to pull this in now if we look at this one we've got this line up here which is a bit odd and I'm not sure the reason why that's appeared there 
So what I'm going to do is delete that binder and we're going to go for just the faces of these. So control click the faces. You saw the other ones actually worked and then use the subshape binder. So that binder there. So we pulled in all those faces there. When we go into the sketch, you'll see we've got this object here. If we hide each of these, so I'm control selecting each of these and pressing the spacebar, you see we've got the individual faces that are now in orange on here. We can link to these with our external geometry, so create an edge link to external geometry, and we can pull in parts of these. So I'm going to pull in the points at each of the ends, like so. Anything we add to these points will get constrained to them. So if they're constrained to them, they're going to be the same size of that face. So let's add a rectangle to this. And because we're sketching inside our geometry, so we added this eye here, which is a void, these will become voids as well. So I'm just constraining to these points with the auto constraints. We don't need the shape binder now. Let's press the space bar. You can see those are fully constrained inside there. Let's just hit the escape key or press the right mouse button. And now come over to task, close. And what you'll see is we've got the voids. And if we bring back the front back body, you can see how that's connected in there and bring back the bottom body. Those are connected through. And also bring back the clone of this one, and that's connected through. So what happens when we come over to this side, remembering that we've cloned this object here. Well, when we bring that back, let's go down to the clone side body. And you can see nothing's coming back at the moment, so we've got to go inside here and look you can see the clone is invisible. Don't so press the space bar there. And now we've got that object. So what are the advantages of using the shape binder over, say, taking this face and working out the dimensions from the original sketch and add it into our geometry using lengths and placement with datum data in there, as you would do, say, what we did with the side when we create the side here and we've come into that and look at that sketch you can see that we've got these here which are known as datum constraints and these set the widths and the heights and the lengths etc so we would need to take this length here not the 70 millimeter but the five millimeter there and also work out the length of this which is the 15 millimeter, this one here. Why would we use our shape binder to do this? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a explore in here. The good thing is, because we've created an assembly here, let's double click this. So if I double click it, we'll get the actual body behind here and we can find it much easily when we bring this around. So that one there, so this one here, so this front body. And it's highlighting over here, so double clicking it. Like so, we can see we get the front body there. If we move that front body, or say change the pad size, let's go into the front body, double click that pad size, let's set it to two millimeters, like so. See what's happened? Everything has changed. So these tabs are now two millimeters. The void that's created to allow those to slip through here and attach have also changed because we've linked to that external geometry. Let's do the bottom ones here as well. So double click those, the bottom body comes up. Spend that, double click the pad, set that to two millimeters. So those are changed. Now you obviously see inside that we've got some gap in here. So we've got to move these across and the same thing applies. So this one is the clone this side. So we have to move the clone and this side. 
Actually, this side is connected, so we just move the clone. Let's move out, click on the top. Let's flip it around this side, which makes life a little bit harder because it's just disorientated ourselves. So we've got that one there. Let's come down the clone. Click on the front back clone body, right click, transform, and let's click on top again and just move this into position. Just move that in there. So it's touching. You can see where the original slot was. When we hit OK, that will move in. So that's all connected there. And what we'll do is double click this one, the side body, so we can see that, double click the pad, and set that to two millimeters as well. And that will set the clone as well. So now we've dimensioned this, we can see that well, we need to bring this in as well. So let's click on the pad. That's the side body, right click transform and move that in as well. There we go. Yeah, okay. So we've got those in there. We can 3D print this by exporting out the individual elements. So to do that, you would let's collapse all these so we can see what we've got. We can click on the front back file export and export them to STL. So come down, click STL, and we've got free cat elephant front back body and save that. And if I imported that back in, that STL file, and right click, transform, bring this out, you can see that's a perfect replica of that in STL format. And that can be placed on a 3D printer, and we can do that with all these sides. So we can 3D print this object, or we can create a 2D form. Now, why would we create a 2D form? Well, we may want to paper cut it, or we may want to transfer it to another piece of non-printable material, perspex, cardboard, etc., and draw around it and cut it out. And the way to do that is, first we need to use something in the draft workbench. And we're gonna use that on all of these bodies. So I'm just gonna save that. And we're gonna jump over to the draft workbench. So this one here. This holds some nice tools in here to actually flatten these into a 2D object. We first must make sure we're in the right perspective. So I've clicked left, so we're looking straight down on the object. This is important because if we was at an angle, then our 2D view of this will be actually projected in 2D like this. Let me show you, so click on that body there, double click it, come up to the draft, which we was already in, come to modifications and show 2D view. That's actually created a 2D shape of that at that angle. You can see it on the bottom here, this one here. And what we need to do, highlight all those, press the space bar, and there's our shape, but it's at an odd angle. So we we'll delete that 2D view and we'll bring back all of these. So I've highlighted all of them by pressing the shift, click on one, press the shift, click on the other, press the space bar, it's brought them all back. So that's click on, say, the top view. We can select the bottom of the base there. So this one in here, double click that to get the body. There we go, the body's highlighted. It's important to select the part that you want to actually 2D view out. So we can actually take any of these actions and create a 2D view of them. But we want the top most one, the bottom body there. Modifications and come down to shape 2D view. And select all of those, you can see what's happened. So it's placed that shape there. This is the correct size. Let's bring this back and we'll go around this. So we only need one of these because they're doubled up. So click that one, modifications, down to shape 2D view. Notice I led to the left. So we've got a 2D view of that elephant now. And also we want the front and we want this object. We'll click that, 
front back, but it will select it from here. Modifications come down to shape 2D view. Let's hide all of these now. And what we have is a number of objects laid on top of each other where we can click and come down to the placement, come down to the position, and we can move them along the X axis out of the way. So let's use page up, page down, or you can use the middle scroll button. And we can place these wherever we want. So let's take this one along the X and send it the other way about there. And this one on the X and send it this way. So we have three items. We actually want two of these and two of these. So let's take this one. Let's just click this one. There we go. Click that one. And we need to clone that. So I'm just going to go to modifications and clone. So that's made a clone of that one. Come down and can see the clone here. And the good thing about clones is you can right click and transform clones if you so desire. So we'll just transform that over here. We don't have to use the placement. Let's put that there. And we'll do the same for this one as well. Click on it, modifications and clone. And then click the clone, right click, transform. And we'll move this out of the way like so. Yeah, okay. So we've got our pieces that we can print or even laser cut out to create this object. Remember if you laser cut in, then the thickness of your material has to be the width of here. So just watch out for that. The same with when you're cutting this onto your piece of material. So if you're printing this out and placing it say on a piece of cardboard and printing these, then you're gonna to have to take into account of those slots, the width of those slots for the width of your material. So the pad needs to be the width of the material, which will create these slots. So remember we padded these objects up by five millimeters, drop them down to two millimeters. If you've got a three millimeter piece of cardboard, then we're gonna actually create all of these in three millimeter size so we get the right slots to allow for these tabs here. So what do we do now? How do we get this onto a printed form? So we're gonna go down to the cardboard cut route. Well, we can go up to file and export. We need to select the objects to export. So we can, I've set one of them like we did before with export them out as an STL file. Or we can multi-select them. Let's multi-select those. Those are all gone green there. We can see they're all in green. And go File, Export. And we can choose what format we want. So there's a number of formats in here. I found that SVG doesn't really work. I think it's something to do with the CPU that's been used in certain laptops. So there is a format to export as, which is quite compatible with a number of other programs out there. And that's this DXF2D. Free software such as Inkscape will be able to pull in DXF2D files, allowing you to print them on a printer. So we'll use that. FreeCAD Elephant.dxf and save that out. So I'm gonna jump over to Inkscape now and go File, Import. And we need to find where I've placed this. So we come down to the, the Elephant DXF and open. So it's asking you for the scale. We hit OK on that. And this will be the original scale that's been placed on those objects. So this will be the same size as what's coming in for FreeCAD. You can see they've all been selected there and acting as one object, but they're not. If you click off and click again a couple of times then that's actually a group of objects so if we go up to object objects this will give you an idea of what's going on in here that's full screen this so we can see what we're doing so let's get rid of some of these from the stroke that can go and we've got these here 
let's bring this down and notice the naming in here we've got clone 2d clone 2d shape 2d view so these all come through and they're all inside a group all inside a layer so we can break these out of the group we can move these about move them onto different pages if we so desire and print these out wherever we want and we can also do some placement so i want to place this one say here making the best use of our paper and we'll move this one into here so we've got that ready for printing and we can delete this one and this one and now we've got a nice template to print we'll print it onto some card and put it together Let's just save that file save as and this will save as an SVG so we can place that alongside our elephant which was in here so that's all saved and ready to go so I just need to print that place it on some card cut it out and construct it if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site i also have a ko-fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.